to the daily insights that matter. We begin today's DITM by talking about the FIIs who continue to invest into the Indian equities for the month of August 2022. The foreign investors have pumped in a little more than 51,200 crore rupees into the Indian equity markets in the month of August 2022. The trend has continued well into the first two trading days of September as well. Now, while August saw the highest inflow in over 20 months, we look at the reasons which compel the FIIs to return to India. Now, after nine months of selling Indian equities, the FIIs have turned net buyers of the Indian equities in July 2022, following a net investment of 5,000 crores in July alone. The trend has picked up steam in August 2022, and August saw the highest investment by foreign investors since December 2020. Between October 2021 and June 2022, FIIs withdrew close to 2.46 lakh crore rupees from the Indian equities collectively. In our DITM episode dated the 19th of August, we had mentioned how the MSCI India Index had outperformed the MSCI Emerging Market Index and was now inversely correlated. While we've been highlighting the overall strength and the resilience of the Indian economy, the FII's return to Indian equities is just additional reinforcement to that very claim. The key takeaways from this is that India's better growth prospects among large emerging markets, softening commodity prices and the crude prices and the relative outperformance of the rupee as compared to any other emerging markets currency is why the FIIs have turned net buyers into the Indian equities. FIIs also did not want to miss out on being invested in the Indian equities at a time when the global economy was recovering with the possibility of the inflation globally cooling off. Now, India's impressive GDP growth and the favourable leading indicators have the potential to attract greater FII flows going forward, but the trajectory of the rising dollar as well as the bond yields could have some bearing of the FII's investment decisions. That said, we would like to reiterate that an investor like you and myself looking to invest for the long term should not base their investing decisions on the FII's inflows or outflows as the FII's have a tendency to jump ship whenever they see a high risk return trade-off across multiple economies. Now, as per data compiled by the Centre for Monitoring Indian Economy or the CMIE as it's well known, India's unemployment rate rose to a one-year high of 8.3% in the month of August as employment dropped sequentially by 2 million to 394.6 million. The unemployment rate was at 6.8% and the employment was at 397 million in July 2022. While the urban unemployment rate is usually higher at about 8% than compared to that of the rural unemployment rate, which is usually at around the 7% levels. The urban unemployment rate in August was at 9.57%, while the rural un unemployment rate was at 7.68%. The intermittent heat waves and the uneven rainfall has affected the sowing activities and contributed to a higher rural unemployment. However, rural unemployment is expected to pick up as delayed monsoons will increase agricultural activities going forward towards the end of the monsoon season. While there are multiple initiatives being taken by the government to boost the urban unemployment, the high rate of unemployment in urban areas remains a concern and remains to see how the same is tackled going forward. The Indian services activity rose strongly in the month of August with the pace of expansion recovering some of the ground lost in July when it fell at a four-month low. Let's look at this as well. Now do remember that a PMI value above 50 indicates expansion in the economic activity while a PMI value below 50 denotes a contraction. The S&P Global India Services PMI Business Activity Index rose to 57.2 in August from July's print of a four-month low, which was at 55.5. The rebound in growth in services sector were due to these factors. Stronger gains in new businesses, stronger expansion in the new work intakes and a quicker upturn in business activity, strong demand momentum, ongoing improvements in the demand which helped service companies pass on the input cost to customers. There was also a softer upturn in the inflation. And lastly, the job creation. The rate of job creation picked up to the strongest in over 14 years in the services sector specifically. 
Also, the strong business confidence among Indian services providers strengthened substantially, reaching its highest since May 2018. Now, from a takeaway standpoint, the services firms showed us a combination of stronger growth and a softer cost pressure in August. Strong and resilient demand helped service companies in maintaining a degree of pricing power and lifted the selling prices among the transfer of cost to the customers. The latest trend in services employment is a contrast to the manufacturing sector's performance. The Q1 GDP also saw a rebound in the services activity while the manufacturing took a dip. So what does all of this news mean for you? The FII flows turning positive helps reinforce the fact that the Indian economy is well on track and is doing well compared to multiple global peers. This will have a direct positive impact on you. Now at a time when the Indian economy is doing well and multiple lead indicators point towards a grow good sustained recovery, a growth in the unemployment rate is a slight dampener to the overall sentiment and needs to be addressed. This for time being will have an indirect negative impact on you. India's services sector expanded for the 13th month in a row in the month of August, with activity rising faster than it did in the month of July. This is a positive for the Indian economic recovery, which is currently underway. And hence, it will have an indirect positive impact on you. While I say this, this is Raj Mehta signing off, wishing you and your loved ones the very best. Thank you. Did you like watching this video? Then download our app, Informed Investor, to watch more such informative and interesting videos.